the most important event of the Vietnam War, it certainly would be the Tet Offensive. In terms of geopolitical change, the Vietnam War was the most significant event of the 1960s and 70s. Many saw this as a proxy war between the U.S. and their communist enemies in China and the USSR. Others saw it as pure empire building and imperialism by the U.S. Either way, this war led to many changes in how people perceived wars and how they were fought. And it also led to a huge amount of suffering on both sides. In all the chaos, some strange and little-known facts can be found. From the unusual Bigfoot-like creature spotted in the jungle to the grand memorial to the soldiers who lost their lives, here are 20 things you didn't know about the Vietnam War. <sighs> Number 20, Batatut. Folks living close to the Vu Quang Nature Reserve in central Vietnam have a curious tale to share about a creature that seems part human, part ape. They refer to it as the Nungoi Rung, or Forest Man. In earlier times, French explorers named it Le Oman Sauvage, meaning Wild Man. American soldiers who encountered the creature during the Vietnam War gave it the name Batatut. The Vu Quang Nature Reserve witnessed intense combat during the American GIs faced both guerrilla fighters and a mysterious being. This creature, reportedly around six feet tall with robust muscles and reddish brown hair from head to toe, exhibited remarkable speed as it moved on its back legs, resembling a human but outpacing Olympic athletes. We're talking about one of the most mysterious creatures of the Vietnam War. The Batatut debate prompted plenty of theories. While some reject its existence, they've also suggested various explanations. Initially, it was thought that the soldiers mistook gibbons native to the region. However, the issue with this theory lies in the height difference. A more plausible theory posits a as-yet-undiscovered orangutan species. Pongo Hujiri orangutans inhabited Vietnam thousands of years ago, but went extinct. While orangutans can stand upright, prolonged walking remains unobserved. Could this be a long-lost creature that came out of hiding to see what all the fuss was about? We probably won't ever know. If you think the Batatut is scary, wait and see what comes to visit you if you don't hit that like and subscribe button right now. Number 19, Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial, also known as the Vietnam Memorial, stands as a national tribute in Washington, D.C., commemorating U.S. service members who fought during the Vietnam War. The memorial site, spanning two acres, prominently features two black granite walls bearing the names of fallen or missing service members from Vietnam and Southeast Asia. The Vietnam Woman's Memorial was introduced in 1993, accompanied by the Three Soldiers statue in 1984. The completion of the wall was in 1982. Situated within Constitution Gardens, just northeast of the Lincoln Memorial and adjacent to the National Mall, the memorial is managed by the National Park Service and draws about 3 million visitors annually. Architect Maya Lin devised the plans for the memorial wall, earning it the 10th spot on the list of America's favorite architecture by the American Institute of Architects in 2007. Its status as a national memorial has also secured its place on the National Register of Historic Places. The memorial has encountered unforeseen maintenance issues like cracks in the granite that emerged in 1984 and 2010. In preparation, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund acquired spare panels in 1990, stored at Quantico Marine Base, which proved vital in 2011 when an earthquake in Virginia damaged two of these. Number 18. Terminology of the Vietnam War Although titles of this famous war have evolved, the most widely recognized term in English is the Vietnam War. Other names include the Second Indochina War, the Vietnam Conflict, and Nam. In Vietnam, it's referred to as Con Chin Ching, translating to Resistance War Against America. The label Vietnam Conflict was primarily coined by Americans to emphasize that the U.S. Congress never formally declared war on Northern Vietnam. President Dwight Eisenhower invoked his constitutional authority and leveraged congressional resolutions, which allowed him to deploy the military via this loophole, but not to actually declare war. 
The Gulf of Tonkin resolution further empowered President Lyndon Johnson, leading to escalated military operations from 1964 onwards. Kan Chin Ching is a commonplace expression among the Vietnamese, embodying the notion of resistance war against America. The Vietnam government uses the more formal term, resistance war against America to save the nation, capturing its patriotic essence. Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia were in the stages of a broader Indo-Chinese struggle following World War II, concluding with communist triumphs in 1975. Number 17. Only 25% of soldiers were draftees. The draft had a profound impact on the U.S. during the Vietnam War. From 1964 to 73, approximately 2.2 million men were drafted from a pool of 27 million eligible individuals. While only a quarter of combat zone troops were conscripted, the draft system influenced many young men to consider military service for a greater say in where they'd serve. Initially, some soldiers supported the war, but for others, being sent to a conflict they didn't believe in felt like a grim fate. To evade the draft, various tactics emerged. Some pursued college or parental deferments, while others deliberately flunked aptitude tests or explored alternative methods. Thousands fled to Canada, and those with connections sought National Guard enrollment. A rising number engaged in direct resistance. Opponents of the war saw the draft as unjust, and paradoxically, while fueling war efforts, it bolstered the anti-war movement. Despite the Selective Service's deferment structure favoring those with less social standing, no one was entirely exempt from the draft. Almost every American either faced the possibility of going to war, or knew someone who did. Number 16. Early American Involvement in Vietnam In 1954, France relinquished its hold on Vietnam as a colony. Yet, even as France prepared to exit, the U.S. and Democratic nations aimed to influence the country's affairs. They pressed the Vietnamese communists, led by Ho Chi Minh, to agree to a treaty dividing the nation in two. Ho Chi Minh established a communist regime in northern Vietnam during the late 1950s and early 60s. Concurrently, the U.S. endeavored to support a non-communist government in South Vietnam. Instead of following the 1954 Geneva Accords calls for a nationwide reunification, after 1956 elections, U.S. officials rallied behind anti-communist leader Ngo Dinh Diem. Initially, Diem seemed like a promising choice for U.S. assistance, as he assumed power in the mid-1950s. The U.S. provided him with political, economic, and military backing, viewing him as the key to preventing communist control over South Vietnam. Under the guidance of U.S. Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization was formed to foster collaboration among regional nations. This collective safeguarded South Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos against communist threats. However, as time passed, differing perspectives arose within the U.S. administration regarding the wisdom of supporting the Diem government. Number 15. Ngo Dinh Diem assassinated in South Vietnam. On November 2nd of 1963, a significant turning point occurred in the Vietnam War with the brutal assassination of Diem and his influential brother and advisor, Ngo Dinh Nu. Prior to their deaths, the U.S. was assisting South Vietnam's government against the Viet Cong and North Vietnam, which supported the Viet Cong. With 16,000 troops stationed in South Vietnam, the U.S. guided ARVN forces and joined them on deep raids into enemy territory. American casualties were on the rise, and images of fallen soldiers appeared on television networks back home. The killings led the U.S. to adopt a distinct strategy for the Vietnam War. Following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy nearly three weeks earlier, Lyndon B. Johnson assumed leadership and maintained his predecessor's policies until 64. The American involvement escalated dramatically, with troops eventually reaching 500,000 as Saigon faced corruption under various generals. In the autumn of 1963, many Americans were unaware of the extent of the Kennedy administration's knowledge about the coup, including the CIA's behind-the-scenes plotting in the weeks preceding the event. President Kennedy was taken aback upon learning of Diem and his brother's deaths, which were not part of the plan. Number 14. Punji Sticks a punji stick is a sharpened bamboo piece, usually one to two feet long, that stays very sharp after being hardened in a fire. 
Often coated with poison or animal waste to increase the pain, punji sticks were simple to make. Even women and children could shape them. During the Vietnam War, they were crafted in large numbers. The dense jungles of Vietnam provided an ideal environment to use punji sticks as traps. Easily concealed amidst thick trees and vegetation, these sticks were challenging for enemies to defeat. Strategically placed around defense positions, potential enemy routes, or areas of planned attacks, like helicopter landing sites, punji sticks were effective. The Viet Cong also fired from jungle tree edges, concealing the danger below from enemy soldiers. When a soldier got injured, it required one or two comrades to carry them away from the battlefield. Thus, a single punji stick could incapacitate multiple enemies, reducing combatants and hampering ongoing fights. Even during lulls in battle, the fear of encountering punji sticks weighed heavy on patrol soldiers' minds. The psychological impact of this constant threat lingered long after the events occurred, affecting many Allied soldiers. Number 13. The Gulf of Tonkin the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution granted President Lyndon Johnson authority to quote, take all necessary steps to repel any armed attack against U.S. forces and stop further aggression, implied from North Vietnam's communist government. It was adopted by Congress on August 7th of 64, after reporting two attacks on U.S. naval destroyers off the Vietnamese coast. Two incidents, occurring on August 2nd and 4th of 64, involving the USS Maddox and the USS Turner Joy, are credited with prompting the resolution. These destroyers were stationed in the Gulf of Tonkin. They supported South Vietnamese military actions against North Vietnam's coast. According to the U.S. Navy, both ships reported being fired upon by North Vietnamese patrol boat. However, questions later arose about the accuracy of the second attack on the Turner Joy. Congress passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution at President Johnson's request, believing he would seek their endorsement before committing U.S. troops to a full-scale war in Vietnam. However, this did not hold true in the end. Number 12. Jane Fonda was an outspoken anti-war activist. After 4,000 years of struggle against nature and against all kinds of very professional armies. During the period of the Vietnam War, Jane Fonda became involved in the anti-war movement. In the 1960s, Fonda actively supported Native Americans and the Black Panthers. Transitioning to the 1970s, she collaborated with actor Donald Sutherland to launch the Free Army Tour, a counterpoint to Bob Hope's USO Tour. While Hope visited military bases on the West Coast, Fonda's FTA aimed to oppose the Vietnam War through anti-war performances. In 72, Fonda embarked on a controversial journey to North Vietnam making the pinnacle and perhaps the most debated aspect of her activist career. Proponents of war decided after this trip to name her Hanoi Jane. During her time in Vietnam, Fonda vocally criticized U.S. military policies and urged pilots to refrain from bombing civilian areas on radio shows. A photo of her sitting on an anti-aircraft gun in Hanoi led to misconceptions that she supported shooting down American planes misconception, war propaganda, either way. Number 11. Vietnam War vets treated poorly when they returned. When I first came down on orders, I was apprehensive and my wife was real shook up. Over 58,000 American soldiers lost their lives in the Vietnam War, and over 150,000 were wounded. Yet returning home had its own fears for those who served in Vietnam. Often after witnessing harrowing scenes, some recall facing derogatory names, while others remember being spat on. Vietnam veterans as a whole received nothing close to the recognition and support accorded to the greatest generation of World War II. This disparity can be attributed in part to the complexities of managing an enduring conflict. Spanning from 64 to 73, the Vietnam War held the title of America's longest war until the war in Afghanistan. Unlike other wars marked by mass demobilizations, most service members spent just a year in Vietnam. Returning soldiers didn't come back with their original units or companies as a constant cycle of deployment and return occurred over a decade. As the war grew more protracted and disillusionment deepened, the soldiers who experienced this revolving door of service came to symbolize an uncomfortable reality that many Americans struggled to acknowledge, defeat. Following World War II, the U.S. enjoyed a robust economy, whereas during and after Vietnam, the nation grappled with stagnation and economic struggles. 
The gradual revelation of war's atrocities intensified a collective feeling of guilt and shame surrounding Vietnam veterans. They became emblematic of a brutal, unsuccessful conflict that the nation found hard to reconcile. Number 10, M16 Rifles. In the 1950s, Eugene Stoner from the Armalite Corporation developed the M16 rifle in response to the US military's quest for an improved infantry weapon. Initially known as the AR-15, it was an automatic variant of Stoner's AR-10 design, featuring aluminum alloy parts and selective fire. The M16 saw its debut during the early 1960s amid the Vietnam War. This period witnessed the transition from the M14 rifle to the M16 as the primary battle rifle for the US military. The new rifle aimed for enhanced accuracy, longer range, and significantly reduced weight. Merely six pounds compared to the 14 pound M14. With a firing rate of 700 to 900 rounds per minute, it outpaced other contemporary rifles, proving formidable against the Viet Cong who possessed fewer weapons. It could be improvised as a makeshift bazooka, mounted atop vehicles for precise long-range targeting, and modified to accommodate flamethrowers. This adaptability expedited clearing large areas, minimizing casualties on both sides. Nonetheless, the M16 encountered issues like occasional jams and barrel blockages that impeded its performance. Additionally, some American troops misused their rifles as clubs instead of firing accurately, resulting in heightened injuries and casualties among US forces in Vietnam. Number nine, 300,000 veterans suffer from daily health problems. A government commission study highlighted that over 40 years after the events, nearly 300,000 Vietnam veterans continue to grapple with daily health challenges. These are stemming from the traumas they endured during the war. Researchers have delved into the lives of Vietnam veterans with a depth of study unmatched in comparison to any other wartime participants. Congress initiated these investigations to fathom the lifelong impact of war on soldiers. Charles Marmar, who spearheaded the latest examination of almost 2,000 veterans, heads the psychiatry department at NYU Medical School. He shared an optimistic perspective. A significant 70 to 75 percent of the examined Vietnam veterans have not endured mental ailments traceable to their service, like PTSD, depression, substance abuse, or alcoholism. Although the war undoubtedly reshapes individuals in profound ways, it doesn't necessarily entail mental illness. And that still means one quarter of the study group did suffer. The study underscored a sobering fact. More than a quarter million Vietnam veterans persistently grapple with daily hardships. Extrapolating these findings to the current generation of veterans suggests a potential concern for families and communities in 2050. Given these outcomes, concerns arise regarding the future well-being of troops who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's important to remember being anti-war doesn't mean being anti-veteran. These people deserve our empathy and respect. Number eight, babies in Vietnam born with horrific defects. Even four decades after its usage, Agent Orange continues to inflict tragic consequences on Vietnamese babies. Despite the war's conclusion in 1971, orphanages persist in caring for children with disabilities that probably stem from the chemicals sprayed by U.S. forces onto crops, plants, and trees. In the rural stretches of southern Vietnam, where Agent Orange was heavily employed during the Vietnam War, families still depend on their children's labor to sustain their livelihoods and income. This reality often leads to disabled children finding their way into orphanages because their families lack the means to provide proper care. Reflecting on this disheartening situation, Mr. Wade, a freelance journalist residing in Bangkok, shared, The heart-wrenching aspect that drove me to visit the orphanages is that many families in Vietnam, especially in the rural regions where Agent Orange was used, lack the financial resources to support a disabled child. Consequently, they entrust them to orphanages. Agent Orange is a fusion of the code names Herbicide Orange and Agent LNX, and it served as one of the herbicides and defoliants deployed by the US military through Operation Ranch Hand, an aspect of its chemical warfare program between 1961 and 1971 during the Vietnam War. Across the decade, nearly 20 million gallons of this chemical were sprayed by American forces in Vietnam. Laos, and parts of Cambodia. 
aiming at eradicating plants and trees that guerrilla fighters could employ for cover by eliminating them. Number seven, armaments manufactured by China and the Soviet Union. In the Vietnam War, the weaponry reached new levels of danger, surpassing that of previous conflicts. The US and South Vietnamese forces placed great reliance on their superior air power, deploying B-52 bombers and other aircraft. Using these aircraft, they unleashed massive amounts of explosives upon both North Vietnam and communist targets within South Vietnam. Predominantly, the weapons wielded by the U.S. troops and their allies was crafted in the U.S., while the communist forces wielded arms supplied by the Soviet Union and China. However, both sides in the conflict employed strategies beyond conventional artillery and infantry weapons to further their respective objectives. The U.S. employed toxical chemical defoliants and herbicides, while the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong ingeniously employed booby traps crafted from sharpened bamboo sticks or crossbows triggered by tripwires. Throughout the war, the U.S. Air Force, alongside South Vietnamese allies, executed countless low-altitude bombing missions across North and South Vietnam, as well as suspected communist areas in neighboring Laos and Cambodia. The advent of the B-52 heavy bomber, produced by Boeing in the late 1940s, alongside the more maneuverable F-4 Phantom fighter planes, bestowed control of the skies on the U.S. and South Vietnamese forces. The Bell UH-1 helicopter, fondly known as the Huey, also played a significant role, operating at low speeds and altitudes and facilitating troop transport, supply conveyance, fire support for ground forces, and the evacuation of injured or deceased soldiers to safety. Number 6. Ho Chi Minh Trail The Ho Chi Minh Trail served as a conduit for military supplies to flow from North Vietnam to South Vietnam, cutting through Laos and Cambodia. During the 1960s, it managed to transport multiple tons of supplies daily. As U.S. involvement escalated, the Ho Chi Minh Trail became a prime target for American military forces. The trail was known to supply the Viet Cong, a significant adversary in South Vietnam. In 1965, the U.S. Air Force launched airstrikes against targets along the trail in Laos, just one instance of ground and aerial attacks. With these actions widely covered by the U.S. media, the State Department stated that President Lyndon B. Johnson's authority for these contentious operations stemmed from the August 1964 Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. Segments of the Ho Chi Minh Trail remain today, with some transformed into the Ho Chi Minh Highway, a paved road connecting northern and southern Vietnam. Number 5. The Pentagon Papers Around 50 years ago, Daniel Ellsberg shook things up by leaking confidential information to the press about the U.S. actions in Vietnam. Back in 1996, the New York Times highlighted how the Pentagon Papers, among other revelations, exposed a pattern of deception by Lyndon B. Johnson's administration. They had systematically misled not just the public, but also Congress. These revealing papers shed light on covert expansions of the Vietnam War such as offshore raids on North Vietnam and Marine Corps operations that flew under the radar of the mainstream media. Ellsberg faced initial charges of conspiracy, espionage, and theft of government property for disclosing the Pentagon Papers. However, these charges were eventually dropped when investigators into the Watergate scandal uncovered attempts by the White House plumbers to tarnish Ellsberg's reputation. Fast forward to June 2011 and the once secret Pentagon Papers were made public. This comprehensive study, stamped Top Secret Sensitive, contained 47 volumes with 3,000 pages of historical analysis and an additional 4,000 pages of original government documents. Number 4. My Lai Massacre Amidst the Vietnam War's grim events, the My Lai Massacre stands as a haunting testament to unimaginable violence. On March 16th of 1964, a group of American soldiers unleashed unspeakable horror upon the village of Mai Lai. The victims, mostly women, children, and elderly men, bore the brunt of this atrocity. The tragic event claimed over 500 lives, with young girls and women enduring abuse and mutilation before being... For an entire year, U.S. Army officers concealed these... only for the truth to surface through the tenacious efforts of the American press. The revelation ignited a global outcry, casting a harsh spotlight on the shocking brutality of the My Lai Massacre and the subsequent cover-up. 
this amplified opposition to the war, further dividing the U.S. While some soldiers resisted following orders from William Calley, the massacre swiftly erupted in mere seconds. Calley himself committed heinous acts, targeting men, women, and children indiscriminately. Mothers shielding their children were shot, while fleeing children faced the same grim fate. Dwellings were set ablaze, and escapees were gunned down. Amidst the violence, countless animals also perished, an unknown number of women suffered rape, and the village was engulfed in flames. Infamously, Kali dragged numerous individuals, including young children, into a pit and mowed them down with a machine gun. Remarkably, at Mai Lai, not a single shot was fired in opposition against the soldiers of Charlie Company. Number three, the Vietnam War was unpopular. The geographical distance between Vietnam and the U.S., over 8,500 miles, compounded the unpopularity of this war. Vietnamese forces never attacked America. Initially, the U.S. entered the war to aid and equip South Vietnam, its ally. As the conflict progressed, American combatant troops were dispatched to counter the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong threats. Despite the Vietnam War serving as a proxy conflict between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, Vietnam never posed a direct menace to America. This fundamental disconnect contributed greatly to public disapproval. The perplexity arose from the question of why young men were required to journey thousands of miles to fight and potentially die when there was no immediate danger to the U.S. While some aimed to halt the spread of communism, the war faced opposition from millions of Americans who believed that the cause lacked sufficient justification. Between 1858 and 1954, Vietnam was under French colonial rule. The first Indochina War was waged from 1946 to 54, leading to the emergence of an independent country, encompassing Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia in 54. Following this, Vietnam was divided into a communist north and a U.S.-supported south, with the intention of eventually reuniting through joint elections. However, the fear of a communist victory led to the prevention of these elections by the U.S. As it became evident that reunification through elections was unlikely, the communist north initiated efforts to support Viet Cong guerrillas in the south. The U.S. responded by providing training and resources to the South Vietnamese government from 55 onward. In 65, direct U.S. combat operations commenced to assist the government. Critics both domestically and globally considered America's involvement in Vietnam as an expression of imperialism. Many believe that after the French departure, the Vietnamese should be allowed to self-govern without external interference. The Vietnam War was viewed as a form of colonialism, sparking widespread opposition due to its perceived alignment with imperialistic tendencies. Number 2. The Vietnam War and the Media Vietnam remained somewhat off the radar in U.S. news until around the spring of 65, when a significant number of American combat troops entered the war. Prior to that, the presence of American journalism in Indochina was limited. Barely two dozen, even as late as 64. However, by 68, the war at its peak drew about 600 accredited journalists from around the globe to Vietnam. They represented various U.S. wire services, radios, and TV networks, major newspaper chains, and news magazines. The U.S. Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, facilitated journalist access to military transportation, making it easier for them to venture into the field and gather first-hand accounts. While being close to the battlefield bore risks, over 60 journalists lost their lives during the conflict. Yet many reporters were primarily stationed in Saigon, now known as Ho Chi Minh City. They often relied on the Joint U.S. Public Affairs Office's daily briefings, playfully dubbed the Five O'Clock Foley's. Often referred to as the First Television War, the Vietnam War saw footage flown to Tokyo for rapid processing and editing before being sent to the U.S. From Tokyo, crucial news could be swiftly transmitted via satellite. This approach famously brought battles directly into American households. The extent of the media's role in the Vietnam War remains a topic of ongoing debate. Number 1. The Tet Offensive, 1968 On January 30th of 68, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese People's Army of Vietnam launched a surprise attack on the South Vietnamese Army of the Republic of Vietnam, the U.S. Armed Forces, and their allies. This audacious plan aimed to strike both military and civilian command centers in South Vietnam without prior warning. 
Named after the Vietnamese Lunar New Year holiday, the offensive occurred during a time when most ARVN personnel were on holiday leave. The Hanoi Politburo's objective was to create political turmoil, believing that attacking urban centers would spark uprisings and weaken loyalty to the existing government. While the initial attack caught the Allies off guard and temporarily led to a loss of certain cities, they swiftly regrouped, counterattacked, and inflicted heavy casualties on the PAVN VC forces. Hanoi's expectations of a popular uprising? It didn't materialize. The intense battle of Hu took a toll on the city, culminating in the tragic massacre at Hu, where PAVN VC caused the deaths of thousands. Fighting extended to the U.S. command base at Khe San for two more months. Ultimately, North Vietnam didn't achieve its military objectives, as South Vietnamese uprisings and ARVN defections didn't occur. However, in the end, this was just one part of a prolonged campaign which ultimately led to U.S. failure in its objectives, and withdrawal from Vietnam having been defeated by the North's communist forces. What are your thoughts on the Vietnam War? Are there lessons we can still learn today from this conflict? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.